Our guest mentor for today is more than qualified to speak in a conversation about repositioning. She recently celebrated her 75th birthday, and today, Springboard once again joins her mentees and fans across Ghana and the world to say Ayiko to this great role model of our time. Springboard 2021 Roadshow, a round of applause as we invite the founder of the Salt and Light Ministries, Dr. Joyce Ayer, to share her guest mentor's comments. I have learned so much from Reverend Albert and Comfort, who are my favorite people, best couple in the world. Just by the way they work together. And what we're going to do today is to open up the opportunities that we have on hand. Now, we're talking about repositioning. And the word that readily comes to mind is invest. Invest. Well, I know my nephew, Nana Bene, is all about investment. But Nana, I wasn't thinking about investing only money. But I was, I'm thinking also about investing time, investing energy, investing talents. That's what I'm thinking about. Because if we're going to reposition, then we need to understand that things are never going to be the same. We need to think ahead. I'm reminded of Noah's Ark. Anytime I think of our time now, I mean, suddenly the world changed. They were on water for a long time, and then they got put on a mountain. The past was gone. They had to think of how to deal with the present as well as the future. And remember, eight people. Eight people. And everything changed since that time. So I want to talk about some roots that we need to have. Because all of us, everybody who has an encounter with Springboard is a leader. And being a leader does not mean that you hold the highest position in an organization or that you must necessarily be the CEO of your own company or that you will be the president of the country. But leading means bringing something useful to development bringing some innovative ideas, bringing some innovative practices, being ahead of the pack, being proactive, recognizing that whatever you do makes an impact for good or for ill. For me, each one of us is a leader. I'm not talking potential. Each one of us is a leader wherever we find ourselves. So there are some roots that we need to think about. And the first root, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using root because, you know, you see a tree, a big tree. And all you see is the power and strength of the tree. But the tree is standing tall and powerful because it's got some roots deep down that nobody can see. All we see is the power that the tree has. So, if you are a leader, what we see on the outside must be based on some roots that you have. Personality traits. And the first one is your integrity. I know, the word has become almost like a cliche. But whatever it is, you can't run away from it. Integrity is really being true to yourself and true to those around you. Who you are at home in your bedroom ought not to be different from who you are in the public space. And that's really what is killing most of us. We try to be something other than we are. And we fail. But be true to yourself. And being true to yourself means you are anchored in some good values. Some really strong good values. One of the best values is that life 
is not a population of one, yourself. Life is about others and yourself. And that what you do in the public space to make other people's lives better is best of all. You feel fulfilled when you have contributed to something good. So if you are a leader, you must remember that you need a few followers, even in your home. Fancy um, you being the leader in the home and your spouse and your children you couldn't care less what you're doing. Or being in the office and really you talk ad infinitum and nobody cares. So you need followers. And followers are end. You can't force them. So you need to be true to yourself. That's the way I'll talk about integrity. And then you need a vision. What is your life about? You know, I, I know we talk a lot about vision. And again, because we are not true to ourselves, we want to grab somebody's vision. We want to grab somebody's vision. But we are not all the same. We're not all the same. We are different. And really, the world is so big, all of us can make great contributions to the world. And what we need to do is to determine, what would I like to do? Have a, a mental picture of how you would like to contribute to life. So after integrity is your vision, shape it, hone it, think about it. And again, remember that it's not a competition because there's room for everything. There's room for everyone. There's room for every idea. The thing is to own the idea, believe in it, and work on it. The third root is concern. Now, assuming that you are in the midst of people and all you think is about yourself, you need to know how others feel when you're doing things. You know, like Roadshow is going um, virtual. You cannot believe how much time has been spent making sure that people in Alaska, people in South Africa, people uh, in maybe uh, a corner in Libya, desert, are able to participate in, in this. Now, that is part of the concern. And then all the people working behind the scenes, the, the concern should be for how they're faring, how are they doing? Are we waking them up in the middle of the night to work? Most of the time, all we want are results. So we don't really care what happens. Now, the fourth route is creativity. And I'm not talking about being an artist. I'm not talking about being an artist or being um, um, somebody with a, the, the gift for work. Somebody's going to come and tell us a poem. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about being a dressmaker. What I'm thinking about in terms of creativity is how you deal with problems. How do you deal with problems? You have to be creative about problem solving. You know? So you have to think about what you want to do. You have to think about the effect it has on people. And every time you have to think of better ways of doing things. And all of us are capable of being creative. The fifth root is results orientation. When you've done everything, there have to be results. And those in the corporate world will tell you, you have to have results. And one of the things I would challenge Roadshow with is one of the results we have to see more often is how what we have done has shaped people's lives for the better. We need more of those stories. More of those stories because our intention on Roadshow is to raise a generation or generations of people whose mindsets are different, whose mindsets are positive, whose mindsets um, are such as to make our continent and our world a better place. Enough of the complaining. Enough of the complaining. We want results. So if you have a complaint, it means you feel that something should be done in a better way. So find that way of doing it rather than moaning and looking for somebody else to do it. So if you want to be an effective leader, you need to be results-oriented. The sixth is courage. 
<laughs> this life is hard. I know we wish that we could walk through life and get all that we want. No. It doesn't happen that way. And courage is not only because a car is coming and you courageously raise your hand and say stop. That's not the kind of courage I'm talking about. I'm talking about the courage to take difficult decisions. Difficult decisions. Sometimes decisions about yourself and the way you need to reposition. The way you need to think about the past, the way you need to think about the present, and the way you need to envision the future. It takes courage. And those of you at the head of the corporate ladder, sometimes you ask your HR people to take decisions about people's performance and so on. And now the results come, and somebody you like very much has to take a walk. A walk outside of the organization. And then you remember, oh, we grew up together. Oh, the father is my friend. Oh, the mother is my, my wife's friend. And so on. We need to take courage. And one of the things that we need most of all, on our continent and in our world, is courage to take hard decisions. Decisions that we know will benefit people. So, in this roadshow program where we are thinking about repositioning we need to review the past using the roots of integrity of vision of concern of creativity of results orientation and courage we need to redesign our present i mean our present is that we are talking to so many people in the world and they are not even face to face. We're doing work from home. It takes courage to do some of these things. You need a certain level of integrity. If you're working from home, are you lying on your bed? And then when it's time to uh, present your report, you hurriedly go, steal from here, steal from here. No. Are you diligent? That's part of integrity, and that is also part of result orientation. And then we need to reimagine. This is where creativity comes in. Reimagine the future. What is the future going to be like? The future needs to be shaped in such a way that we are not individually the only beneficiaries. It needs to be shaped in such a way that all the things we've been looking for in a, a world of harmony. Now, a world of harmony does not mean a world which is uniform. You know, because nature itself tells us that there is unity, but in great diversity. We're told that we get uh, oxygen from plants. Frankly, it's not only one tree. Wherever we are, there are various, various plants. Some are shrubs, some are big trees, some are little trees, and so on. But the issue is that each of them provides what we need. And even in our, in our own world, I mean, we're all different. But the beauty is that in our diversity, we reckon ourselves as human beings with desires, with wants, with skills, with um, talents, with a desire to make a difference. And so we work towards that. I guess in Ghana we say um, one nation with a, a common destiny. Yes, one nation, one destiny. Yeah? Something like that. But frankly, the nation is even divided into 16 regions. And 200 and something districts, 275 constituencies. I mean, this nation is awash with potential for greatness. But we need to recognize that in our diversity, we are strong because we work together. I don't know how you're going to take the springboard. I am very excited 
Because never mind what the gentleman said about me being 75. I'm a very young lady. And I intend to benefit from the roadshow and learn a few more things. Because I have the privilege of relating to many people, old and young. And I would love to be part of the growth that we're looking for. The repositioning of our world. And remember, it's not just repositioning Ghana, its development both socially and economically, but repositioning the world so that we can all benefit from its great diversity. Thank you very much.